A huge welcome here, folks, to our latest YouTube video, The Worm Whisperer, the benefits, the value, the importance of having worms in your soil. And folks, let's start this video off with a worm joke. What do you call a worm with no teeth? Come on, folks, you got this. Why, a gummy worm, of course. What else? Now, you have to agree, that was funny right there. It really, really was. Here's another worm joke. What did the daddy worm say when his son came home late? Where in the earth have you been, son? Your mother's been worried sick about you. Okay, well, I exaggerated and had lived a little bit on that one, but it was still quite a funny joke. Be sure to keep watching this video to the very end. There will be more jokes throughout. And now, folks, it is time to get serious. This video begins with me going hunting for worms. I will discuss with you the tools that you will need. I will show you how to hunt for worms and I will discuss with you the best times to hunt for worms. Next, we will take some time explaining why it is important to add worms to your soil. And we will also discuss the benefits of having worms in your garden soil. And then we are going to be talking about poop, but not just any poop. We will be talking about worm castings. We will also have a discussion about vermiculture and vermicomposting. And ladies and gentlemen, folks, in just five easy steps, I will show you just how to create your very own worm composting bin. It is a very easy process to follow. And near the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen, our grandson James will be showing you just how to add worms to your garden beds. You will most certainly not want to miss that. So, it is quite early here in Gander, Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada. It's around 5.30 a.m. And I am up and ready to go hunting for worms, ladies and gentlemen. And to successfully hunt for worms, you will need an empty container and a trowel and a pair of garden gloves. And as you can see from this clip, I did have a very successful worm hunt, finding about three dozen worms to add to our vegetable beds. At this point, I am guessing you have several questions. How does one hunt for worms? Where does one hunt for worms? And when is the best time to hunt for worms? These questions will be answered soon, folks, but it's time for another worm joke. Okay then, so here it goes. What is worse than finding a worm in your apple? Okay now, folks, give that one some thought, just a little bit of thought. And folks, the only thing worse than finding a worm in your apple is finding half a worm. Now that's funny too, you have to admit. And if this ever happened to you, that you found half a worm in your apple, meaning you ate the other half, don't worry. Because worms are actually good for you. And the next time you enjoy your favorite salad, why not add a few worms? They are high in protein, iron, and amino acids. With trace amounts of copper, zinc, and manganese, all important for a healthy growing body. Bon appetit! Enjoy your meal, folks. Now, folks, the where to hunt is right at the end of my driveway and on my street. You do not have to sneak into a farmer's field or go tracking through the woods. Hunting and digging for worms. Just be careful walking up and down both sides of your street. And, folks, the when to hunt is early in the morning right after a night of light rain. And even though it is early in the morning, you should still wear eye visibility rain gear that is visible to oncoming traffic. Again, folks, be very, very careful. You are looking down most of the time, hunting for worms, but from time to time, you will need to look up to see if there's any traffic. 
And this now brings us to the how to hunt in this video. And we had previously spoken about the tools you would need, an empty container, a trowel, and a pair of garden gloves. So you come upon a worm at the edge of your driveway or near your street, what do you do? With the tip of your trowel or the corner, you will need to approach the worm in its middle. Carefully and gently lift up the worm onto the edge of the trowel. Please watch the next clip as I show you and demonstrate exactly how to catch and hunt successfully for worms. So folks, think you can hunt for worms? Sure you can. Just follow this simple process. It is fairly easy, but again, be very, very careful and watch for traffic. So early this morning around 6 a.m., 6.30, uh, I went hunting for worms uh, on the street near where I live here in Gander, Newfoundland, Labrador, Canada. And what you are looking at here in this uh, ice cream container is about three dozen or so worms that I found this morning while I was hunting. Now, normally after a successful worm hunt, I would head the worms directly to my garden beds right away. However, our grandson James informed me the day before that I wasn't allowed to head worms to our garden unless he was there. So while I awaited a visit from James, I had to add some garden soil among the worms. And you will have to wait for James as well, because toward the end of this video, James will be showing you just how to head worms to your garden beds. And now, this is the perfect time for another worm joke. What do you call it when worms take over the world? Wait for it, wait for it, and here's the answer. Why, global worming, of course. Now that's very funny. So, ladies and gentlemen, folks, why worms? Why are worms so important to garden soil? Let's try to answer that question next. And in the next clip, you will see a picture showing how worms actually do live in garden soil. They borrow and spend their days making tunnels the diameter of drinking straws. This aerates the soil and makes it possible for rainwater to seep way down into the soil. And this is so important to growing fruits and vegetables and herbs, ladies and gentlemen. And in this way, worms are like free garden or farm help. And free in this sense is always good. Now, as worms dig and borrow and borrow and dig, they like to eat and they will practically eat anything that has fallen on the ground or anything that lives in the soil. They will eat fallen or rotten leaves, bacteria, fungi, and microorganisms living in the soil. They will also eat grass, and they'll also eat berries that have fallen to the ground. They will eat the remains of dead animals and other organisms, and they will also eat branches and limbs that have fallen from trees. With all of that eating, folks, worms will need to go to the bathroom. And they will go to the bathroom right where they are, pooping as they move and tone through the soil. They leave their poop everywhere, folks, throughout the soil. Now, this worm poop, also called worm cast or worm castings, is super, super good. And most farmers and most gardeners will tell you that it is the best organic fertilizer there is. It can be used immediately to fertilize your vegetable, fruit, and herb gardens, and it contains lots of organic matter. Worm poop, or worm cast, also contains calcium, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium, all essential minerals for healthy plants. Time for another worm joke, folks. What do you call the worm who ate Mozart's remains? 
Okay, now that one is real, real easy, folks. You should get this one. Why, the worm who ate Mozart's remains is a decomposer. That's funny. It is time now to start our discussion on vermiculture, vermicompost or composting, and vermicast or vermicastings. All three of these terms will be discussed next in this video. And we will begin with the question, what is vermiculture? And the simple answer is, folks, it is the rearing or the raising or the farming of worms. And worms can be farmed or raised on a very large scale, as you can see in this clip and in the next clip as well. These large worm beds contain thousands, perhaps millions of worms. Worms that are sold to farmers and to gardeners and to bait shops to be used as fishing bait. And some species, such as mealworms, are sold as human food. We hope you are still watching, folks, and we want to remind you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting that subscribe button located in the bottom right-hand corner of this video. Worms are also raised by small-scale kitchen gardeners, backyard gardeners, and by hobby farmers. And they are raised in small bins like the one seen in this clip and the ones seen in the next clip for the purpose which we will explain next in this video. So what is vermicomposting? And the simple answer is, folks, it is a process of using worms to digest and compost table scraps and other vegetative matter such as dead and rotting leaves, hay, straw, shredded paper, and perhaps cardboard. And the end product, if you don't mind my pun, ladies and gentlemen, of all this worm digestion and breaking down of material is a very, very rich humus-like material or soil that is also known as vermicast or vermicastings. And in very simple terms, it is worm poop or worm castings. And as previously mentioned, folks, it is considered by most farmers to be the best organic fertilizer or soil amendment. And again, it can be used immediately to enrich your soil as it contains lots of organic matter and several essential minerals such as calcium, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and magnesium. All essential and vital for healthy growing plants. And it is time for another joke. What's invisible and smells like worms? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Bird farts, of course. What else could it be? And if you said that joke stinks, I would have to agree. And now, let's get started, folks, by following this very easy five-step process to building our very own worm composting bin. And in step one, you will need to get yourself a couple of totes or a couple of five-gallon buckets to use as your worm composting bin. And make sure there is a lid or cover. And begin by drilling lots of small holes in the sides, bottom, and lid of the top bin. And in step two, ladies and gentlemen, folks, you will need to add a layer of damp paper, hay, or straw to the bin. A layer of damp, rotting leaves or grass clippings works well, too. And in step three, bring on the worms, lots of worms, and cover in a thin layer of soil. And in step four, add your food scraps to the worm bin and bury with more soil. And this now brings us to step five, fitting on the lid or cover and letting the worms do their thing. Let the worms digest and decompose the food scraps and in doing so, create vermicast or vermicompost. Which you can add to the soil in your garden and to the soil in your greenhouse. It is time now for our last and final joke, I promise. Here it is, what did the worms say to the compost? Do you think you know this one? It's been a real pleasure gnawing you. And that's really funny. And folks, here's James to show you how to add worms to your garden soil. And James is now going to take some of these worms out of the ice cream container. And he's placing them in the little holes, little trenches, and we're covering them up. James, we're gonna do this in all the beds so we have to share the worms out, okay? But, what did you find? 
Okay, looks like a grub. We'll have to remove that one. James is helping me put the worms in our raised vegetable beds. Puppy went hunting for worms this morning out on the street. And I got quite a few. We did this last year, remember? Okay, go ahead, put another worm in the trench. Okay, I think you've got two put in that one now. Okay, probably a couple of more and then move along to some of the other beds, okay? Share them out among my raised vegetable beds. I'll probably put three or four worms in each of these beds to head to the ones that are already there. And I have quite a lot of worms in my raised vegetable beds, ladies and gentlemen. So using the same trowel that I used this morning, right here, I'm just gonna make a little dent or a little hole in the, uh, in the raised bed. Move the saw to one side and go to my container, reach in and take a worm. And I'm just gonna gently place it down into the hole and I'm just gonna cover it up. Probably put another one over here. Do the same process. Take a bit of soil out. Go back to my worm container. Reach in and take a worm. That's a nice one, hey? I just gently lay it in the hole that I made and cover it up. A new home for the worms. And these worms are going to do great things to my raised vegetable beds and help quite a bit to make my uh, vegetable plants grow and for us to have healthy vegetables later this fall. And there you have it folks, James with help from his poppy showing you how to head worms to your garden soil. It was indeed a lot of fun. And it was indeed a lot of fun making and creating this video, especially all those worm jokes, right? We hope you learn something new about worms in this video, folks. We hope you learn lots about vermiculture, vermicomposting, and vermicast or vermicastings. We did talk a lot about poop, about worm poop, and we talked about the importance of worm poop to your garden. And we discussed how worm poop or worm castings is considered by many farmers to be the best organic fertilizer or soil amendment. And we also showed you how to follow a very easy five-step process to create your very own worm compost bin and create your very own worm cast, worm cast that you can add to your own garden. And folks, we really truly hope you enjoyed and had fun watching this video and that you did learn something. Please leave us a like, leave us a comment and share our video. And of course, please subscribe to our channel. And that is, as always, Gary Betty Lee, GBL, the Old Church, Five Acre Olmstead. Thanks for watching, folks.